We are now interested in trying to analyze what one can say about the growth or the diminution of wealth over a succession of investments according to a given portfolio. So bear in mind the portfolio at hand is a vector of possibilities, a distribution of wealth across various stocks. We are dealing with a constantly rebalanced portfolio where at the end of each day's trading we reappropriate wealth so that the proportions of the various stocks fit the prescription of the portfolio. The progression of wealth is governed by the stock price relatives for each trading day. So for day n, you have a stock price relative, vector x with the superscript n, which tell you how much stocks, individual stocks have gone up or down in each of those stocks. The wealth relative at the close of a given day, say n, tells us how much one dollar invested at the end of the previous day's trading will have made at the end of the current day's trading. And finally, the growth of wealth, starting with an initial wealth W0, which we shall take to be 1, is governed by a simple recursive equation. Wn, the wealth at the end of day n's trading, is given by the wealth at the end of the previous day's trading, Wn minus 1, times the wealth relative for day n. Now, we really can't ask for a much simpler characterization of what's happening to the investment. But of course, we realize that the wealth relatives S1, S2, S3, through Sn are all chance-driven. And so, of course, this is now a chance-driven entity. Can we say anything reasonable about it? So, we begin the analysis by setting up a simple inductive step. And we try to work it through step by step. We know what the wealth is at the close of trading on day n in terms of the wealth at the close of trading on day n minus 1. What can we say about the wealth at the close of trading on day n minus 1? Well, of course, the same recursive equation tells us it is related to the wealth at the close of trading on day n minus 2, modulated by the wealth relative for day n minus 1. Or in other words, we can decompose Wn minus 1 into Wn minus 2 times Sn minus 1. And now we've got a slightly longer equation. But the wealth at the close of trading on day n minus 2 can be related to the wealth at the close of trading on day n minus 3 by looking one more day in the past. And now our equation expands a little further. And now the pattern becomes clear. We're going to inductively step through one day at a time going back into the past until we end up with day 0. And each day we go back, we incorporate one more wealth relative for that day into our product. And so at the end, we relate the wealth at the end of day n to the starting wealth, w0, by a simple product. The wealth at day n is governed by the initial wealth times the individual wealth relatives for each day. For simplicity, let's assume we have an initial wealth, w0 of 1. If we had some other wealth, it's just going to multiply everything by whatever the initial wealth was. So, if our initial investment was one unit, distributed according to our portfolio A, then after n days of trading, our wealth would have become the product of the wealth relatives S1, S2, S3 through Sn. One could hardly ask for a simpler expression on the right-hand side. Oh, good one. If one were to quibble at all, it is because the expression on the right is a product. It's a product of chance-driven entities. And products are nice and elegant and fairly simple to describe, but we might worry that handling a product is a lot harder than handling a sum. Wouldn't it be nice if instead of a product on the right, we actually had a sum? 
how could one convert a product into a sum? We scratch our heads and we say, well, an atavistic tug at memory. From our first days of calculus, tell us, wait a minute, the logarithmic function has exactly the desired property. The logarithm of a product is a sum of logarithms. And so if I were to take the logarithm of the right-hand side, I would get a sum. That leaves us one more question. The logarithm could be to any base whatsoever. What is a reasonable base? Well, we shall choose 2 as the base for the logarithm because as we shall see shortly. It's going to give us a very clean and intuitive description of what is happening to wealth. So accordingly, let us take the logarithm base 2 of the product on the right. But of course, we can't simply cavalierly take a logarithm of something on the right and preserve equality. To undo the logarithm, we have to put the logarithm in the exponent of a power of 2. And now you see all we've done is rewritten a product as 2 to the power of log base 2 of the product. But now the magic of the logarithm says the logarithm of a product is a sum of logarithms. And therefore, without further ado, in the exponent, I will get 2 to a power of a sum of logarithms. Each of the logarithms is a logarithm base 2 of, bear in mind, of these wealth ratios. So we have the logarithm base 2 of S1, the wealth ratio, the amount wealth has increased proportionately over the course of day 1. The proportional increase of wealth over day 2 is S2, and we have logarithm base 2 of S2, and so on down. So now we've got a sum of logarithms, and this is promising because we know how to deal with sums. One more step of simplification, or at least clarification. We have a sum of n entities, admittedly looking complex and messy. Well, it'll be natural then to consider what happens to the average, the arithmetic average of such a sum. In other words, what happens if we divide it by n? That gives us the average change, the average logarithm of a wealth ratio. Of course, I can't simply divide by n if I don't multiply by n. And so here is an identity. The wealth at the end of day n's trading is given by a power of 2. And in the exponent, I get n times an arithmetic average. Let's promptly give it a name. Let's call that arithmetic average delta sub n. All right. And now we've got a clean, elegant description of what is happening to wealth. The wealth after n days of trading, starting from a unit wealth, apportioned daily in a constantly rebalanced portfolio, A, is 2 to the power n times delta of n. And what is delta of n? It's an arithmetic average of the logarithms of wealth ratios. This is a beautiful, clean, and elegant description. And now we are essentially home free. This will be our next subject.